When I begin to think of the Wake Forest I know and love, two words come at once to my mind, friendliness and honor. I heard them for the first time as Wake Forest words on the night of my own freshman orientation. And for many years, every Wake Forest freshman was given a badge to wear. The badge had two words on it, friendliness and honor. The friendliness we spoke of was not just about saying good morning or waving a hand in greeting, nor was it merely a sign of Southern hospitality or student camaraderie. It incorporated the faculty also. The student yearbook, in fact, introduced the faculty section with the words, our friends, the faculty. And beyond the Monday, Wednesday, and Friday classes, and the Tuesday and Thursday afternoon laboratories where teaching and learning officially took place. There were frequent encounters between students and teachers here and there on the campus or in town, which opened eyes and inspired confidence and led to new insights about one's life and career. I do not wish to make unsupported claims for Wake Forest or for our faculty, but I do believe that friendliness between students and teachers is still part of our collegiate environment. The other day I received, as I often do, a letter from a recent graduate. This one said, I've told many folks that if I had to make my college decision over 100 times, I would 100 times choose Wake Forest. It was a perfect setting for a young man from the rural environment of Anson County who wanted to broaden his horizons. Upon arrival, I found myself woefully unprepared academically, but also at once, I found the opportunity to learn and grow. He then mentioned by name 10 professors from seven different departments who had helped and inspired him. Perhaps a better word than friendliness is friendship. I think that Wake Forest is a place for friendship. And when I look at the two words we have chosen to define the Wake Forest faculty member, teacher and scholar, I speculate that maybe we should add a third word, friend. That may well be the best word of all. As I look at our nation and our world as they appear today, I see an increasingly urgent opportunity and need for men and women like Wake Forest students who to be sure, in Emerson's word, think, but also represent character, affection, justice, principle. I would say indeed that principles are more important to our students, and of course to us too, than high grades or intellect, as valuable as they are. Almost every failure we hear about, almost every fall from grace, whether in Raleigh or in Washington or on Wall Street, or even sometimes in our hometowns, is a moral failure, not an intellectual failure. And these failures, unfortunately, are bipartisan and interfaith, and they ignore Emerson's warning, nothing can bring you peace but the triumph of principles. Obviously, the Wake Forest concept of honor was rooted in the Christian faith, and specifically in that version of Christian faith that is called Baptist. But Wake Forest, even on the old campus, was not imprisoned by creed or doctrine, nor was the classroom used as a setting for persuasion toward belief. Religion was prevalent as an assumption, but not a proclamation. Evidences of faith were all around us, but they were, so to speak, between the lines. The story of Wake Forest since 1834 has parallels almost everywhere in private higher education in America. Until 1843, the motto of Harvard, then two centuries old, was Christo et Ecclesiae, for Christ and the Church. Only then was the motto changed to Veritas, Truth. Wake Forest's motto of Pro Humanitate did not require such a radical change. It simply had to be reinterpreted. Today, Pro Humanitate is still Wake Forest's much cherished motto. 
but it is no longer for most Wake Foresters an invitation to proclaim and to convert. Rather, it tells us to be friends to all humanity with honor, to teach, to help, to serve. And nothing is more encouraging to me than to know students and alumni who hear the words pro humanitate and then with friendship and honor, put those words into practice. As we look to the future, I hope that we will remember friendliness and honor and pro humanitate as cornerstones of what I think of as the uniqueness of Wake Forest as a university. I do not like to talk about peer institutions. And may I say that for me, national rankings of universities are invariably shallow and partial and not to be trusted. Wake Forest really has no peers. There is no other school quite like us. We stand alone. We are what we are. We do not exist in relation to other schools. We succeed or we fail only insofar as we are true to our commitments, to our own ambitions, to our own destiny, to friendship and honor. Because I have talked at length about friendliness and honor and may seem to have ignored the academic purposes, which after all give substance to a university, I want to end with a tribute to learning itself. It comes from T.H. White's The Sword in the Stone, a retelling of the legend of King Arthur. You may have read it when you were a boy or a girl. The wise old magician Merlin is giving his student the once and future King Arthur, some farewell advice about how he should use his time. The best thing, says Merlin, is to learn something. That is the only thing that never fails. You may grow old and trembling. You may lie awake at night. You may miss your only love. You may see the world about you devastated by evil lunatics. You may see your honor trampled in the sewers of baser minds. There's only one thing for it then, to learn. That is the only thing which the mind can never exhaust, never alienate, never be tortured by, never fear or distrust, and never dream of regretting. Learning is the thing for you. Look at what a lot of things there are to learn. Pure science, astronomy, natural history, literature, biology and medicine and religion and geography and history and economics. And Merlin continues. At the end of his discourse, Merlin says to the young and future King Arthur, do you think you have learned anything? To which Arthur replies, I have learned and been happy. My hope for each graduate of the Wake Forest of our future is that he or she, if asked the question on commencement day, do you think you have learned anything? Will be able to say, I truly love what Wake Forest stands for. I have made friends. I have conducted myself with honor. I have learned and I have been happy.